Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Listen, it's such an exciting time because when, when you've received the word of God, it's so sweet. <laughs> it's good. It's so sweet. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Release your faith right now with me in agreement and say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, I, I was showing you something yesterday from the book of John chapter 10. John chapter 10 and verse 27. Jesus was speaking here. You can see this written in red. And he says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them, and they follow me. Now look at the next verse. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And, meaning it's a continuation from what he was talking about, okay? And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my hands did you see that hmm. so thank you holy spirit you know when you read scriptures you have to relate with them okay you have to relate with them scriptures are not just for you to have head knowledge scriptures are relatable so this is a man speaking i mean jesus was speaking here so he was speaking to people and he wasn't speaking like spoken word. You understand what I'm saying? He's speaking so that you will hear, understand him, and relate with what he's talking about. Okay? So now he says, My sheep hears my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Now, in that following me, what do I give to them? He says, I give unto them eternal life. Now, take note. He didn't say they receive eternal life. He says, I give unto them, meaning for you to receive something, you have to be given. And here, Jesus clearly stated that the giver is himself. I give. He didn't say they shall be given. He was very clear about who the giver is. He says, I give unto them eternal life. And guess what? He says, they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hands. Now, I was telling you yesterday, when you see false preachers, false prophets, false teachers, just doing all their jargons and, 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 and going unrestrained, you know, sometimes you pray, God, kill these people. I told you yesterday, don't waste your time. Don't waste your time. Most likely, God will not kill them. See, if, if, if God is going to destroy anybody, it's going to be according to the person's iniquity, you see, and, and according to the person's action. So if they do things that are worthy of death, it's between them and God. It's not because of your prayer. As long as it comes to this. See, yeah. You know, I, I say this, I've said this different times. If, if, if you were Jesus, okay, and... You, you had preached for three and a half years. The whole nation knows you. And then they put you to death. Okay? For whatever reason. And they put you to death. And you told them, look, I'll rise again. And you knew a day came in that whole trial that they asked a multitude of people, what should they do with you? Now, you were here telling these folks that, look, I'm the son of God. Okay? And then... A whole multitude cried out and said, crucify him. And they actually chose a, a, a murderer. They preferred a murderer to you. And now you die. And on the third day, just like God told you, you rise from the dead. Well, what was the first thing you want to do? No, think about it. What's the first thing you want to do? Even, even me talking to you, I can tell you what I would love to do. You see, all those that champion my debts, I will pay them a visit. The 9, like 2 a.m. 
<laughs> pay them. Just, just go sit down by their bedside and tap them. Hello. <laughs> you understand? You know, you know the effect that can create. Now, so here's Jesus. He died. He rose from the dead. And he's, the life he lived after he rose from the dead was not the kind of life that you would, you would want to live. A lot of people did not see Jesus. He never did any public preaching. He never did. After he rose from there, he never did any public appearance. So bad that the news that the disciples stole his body was all over town. And a lot of people believed it. Yet he was alive. He only appeared to his disciples. Didn't even go show himself to Pilate. Didn't go show himself to the high priest. No, he didn't. And then you wonder why. I thought he died to save the whole world. So now his reason, why don't he? Jesus could have just simply stood before the whole world. I mean, Jesus could have actually either, God could have invented cable news at that time or satellites at that time or would have waited. Maybe Jesus should have come now and that you can just cause the whole earth, you know, of course, you know, I mean, majority of people to see what's going on. See, imagine cameras being stationed at the tomb. You see, this man said after three days, he will rise again. I, I bet it's not only soldiers that would have been there. I'm sure people would have mounted their obi vans and, and, and things and, and like, let's watch and see third day. He said he will rise. Let's see. All their lights will be, will be shining on that tomb, those, that stone that covered the tomb. And, and, and journalists, journalists will not sleep that night. They want to see what's going to happen on the third day. You know, you want to wonder, why didn't God just wait until this time? Why didn't God, or why didn't God just, drones, imagine drones just flying, you know, focusing, who can't miss this. And the truth is this, Jesus did not rise to prove anybody or to prove any point. He didn't. Neither did God raise him to show to the world that I have power to raise the dead. When Jesus rose from the dead, he only appeared to those who believed in him. Yes. Now, the reason is because if you don't believe in him, you can't even see him. I told you before that when Jesus rose from, remember we're talking about the knowledge of God now, and I, was, I ended last week by emphasizing that the only part of the Godhead that is seeable is the word of God, okay? The only part of the Godhead that is seeable is the word of God. Okay, so now this is the word of God that was made flesh. And the moment he rose from the dead, he entered into his real glory. This is who he really is. Yeah. And, and that's the reason after Jesus rose from the dead, they, he, wasn't, he, he didn't have a home. Understand what I'm saying? He didn't have a home that anybody could go to. No, he didn't. So he, he, the disciples cannot even follow him anywhere. See? So he finishes with them. He, you know, the Bible said, you know, John, John speaking, I think in John chapter 20, the very evening after they discovered the tomb was empty, that same evening, they were together and then Jesus just appeared. The doors were locked. The doors were shut. Windows shut. He didn't jump through the window. He didn't come through the roof. Just see him. How, how, how do you, how would you feel just discussing with somebody and you just turn and you see someone sitting at and like, sorry, as in how, where did you pass? Yet he was not a ghost. Yeah. See. And then they told Thomas, Thomas said, no, I can't look. I can't believe that until I see him with my eyes and I see those holes in his hands and then that, that hole on his side. And the Bible said eight days later, Jesus showed up and Thomas was there. Showed up. And then he said something to Thomas. He says, Blessed are those whom have not seen yet believe. Believe what? What they were told. Because John had said, I think that's in chapter chapter 20 also. John had said that, I think verse 10. John had said that, or verse 9 or verse 10, John, John chapter 20, John had said that 
Because at that time, they didn't know the scriptures that he would rise from the dead. Now, it's written in the scriptures, written in the Psalms. They did not know the scriptures. Okay? So, even though Jesus told them that he would rise after the third day, they didn't know the scriptures to watch. No, they didn't. Now, it's afterwards, now when they began to have understanding that they saw that scripture and said, Hey! It was written concerning me, praise God. So why didn't he just show himself to everybody? Because not everybody could see him. Yes, not everyone could see him. Even if he desired to, to show himself to everyone, they wouldn't see him. Now, if you cannot hear his voice, you cannot see him. See? Now also, you know, sometimes as, as preachers, we, we hear testimonies of people who say, Jesus appeared to me. And then we go, Jesus, I want you to appear to me. I want. If you don't hear his voice, you won't see him. Because even when he appears, he only appears to those that hear him. Yes. Understand these things. If you have not learned to follow his voice, because he speaks to you and you hear his voice. But you know, some people only pay attention to his voice when they're in some serious trouble. Some pay attention to his voice once a month. Some even once a year. You know, when they are crossing over to the new year, say, ah, I need to hear God concerned. But those that have learned the, the practice of living by his word, you remember what he said to Moses. Jesus repeated, as a man shall live by every word that proceeds proceeds which is present continuous every word that proceeds from the mouth of god i heard god yesterday is not sufficient to live today see you must be sure you hear you're hearing him right now okay so now jesus said they hear my voice and i know them and they follow me. So he would not waste his time trying to reveal himself to people that will never hear him. Yeah. Now that's why he couldn't hold a public meeting. That's why even though he wanted to heal people, he, he still had that compassion in him. But now he's even him, he's helpless. He's, he shows up in, 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 in a body they touch him. You remember he told them, I'm not a ghost. A ghost does not have flesh and bone like you see me do. Okay? So they touched him. They ate with him. And he wasn't faking the eating. Now this is Jesus in his glorified form after he rose from the dead. See? Because he's the word of God that was made flesh. And he will show up with them and when he's done with them, they don't know where he goes to. See, they don't know where they can go to meet him. He only comes and he gives them instructions. So the same way he say, meet me at this, that, that hill, you know, in Galilee. They said, okay, so let's go. And according to the book of Matthew, they got there and some were still doubting. Because see, every time he showed up, he showed up in a different form. He never showed up. He didn't always show up in the same form like Jesus, the earthly Jesus that they knew. No, he, he showed up in different forms. So that's why you find the disciples see him and they go, who are you? See, But the moment he speaks, oh, he's the one. So that's why I told you, if you don't hear his voice, you can't even see him. There is, you, you, there is no point trying to see him because you only confuse yourself. Now, people have, have prayed and prayed like that and Satan has appeared to them thinking, because, because they kept pressuring him. And that's the one thing you have to be careful about. You, he, you can't pressure him into appearing to you. No, you can't. You can never do it. But the flip side of this is, if you pressure and pressure and pressure, Satan will take advantage of that, your desire, and he will bring something to you. And you can go to the, you can run to the street and tell everybody, Jesus appeared to me, yet it wasn't Jesus that appeared to you. Now look at this. He, he, he said in John chapter 10 here, he says, I give unto them eternal life. I give unto them eternal life. Now what is eternal life and how does he give it? I read this to you in John chapter 17 and I want to read it again. John chapter 17 and verse 2. 
John 17 verse. This is Jesus speaking also. Now we're doing scriptural comparison. As thou had given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou has given him. So Jesus had been given the authority to give eternal life to everyone that God has given to him. Okay, so Jesus is the giver of eternal life. The word of God is the giver of eternal life. Hold on, follow me now. Verse 3, now this is where we're headed for. And this is life eternal, or this is eternal life, it's the same thing. This is life eternal. What is it? That they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Jesus said it. It's, he was talking to the Father. He says, Lord, as you have given me authority over all flesh, that I should give eternal life to as many as you have given to me. Now, this is eternal life. So when Jesus was speaking in John chapter 10, he says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Why won't they perish? Because they have received eternal life from him. Now, what is eternal life? Remember, he is the giver of eternal life and he says eternal life is that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So Jesus gives the knowledge of the Father, the knowledge of himself to you. That is eternal life. So you want to talk about what will make you not to perish is how much knowledge you have of him. How much knowledge you have of the Godhead. Because when he says that they might know that the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou, he is speaking of the Godhead. How much they know is how much eternal life they possess. Yeah. And, and that's why you must never be deceived. I say this with all caution and respect, okay? You must never be deceived by, by looking at people. You know, sometimes people misjudge things because, of course, their, their understanding is weak. So they, they misjudge things. They look at, for example, you know, a man who's, who's done so great things, you know, who's, who's built whatever you can think about or holds massive crusades around the world and you go, Wow, this man is a great man of God. And then some other person who may not do all those mega crusades, and he just has, he just have maybe 50 people he's teaching the word, but then he has an in-depth knowledge of the word of God. Now you want to ask people, between this man and that man who's globally known, any city he enters, the whole city is closed down. If you want to ask who's greater among these two, you most likely would say the one with greater results, okay? Now, why results are very, very important, of course, it's very, very important, but there's something you need to understand about God. And, and, and even as a preacher, if you understand this, happy are you, okay? Now, not everyone will do big crusades like that. Not everyone will build mega buildings like that. Okay, now those things are done by faith. Don't get me wrong. They are done by faith. And two elements that exist in those things, um, grace and faith. But then, as, as, as the body of Christ, when one person does things like that, now what you see is what you are capable, whether you've done it or you may not even ever do it. But you, you can see in this person what I'm capable of doing. And that's the truth. So if he's done it, he's done it for you. Yes. So I don't need to do it. Now, in different generations, God always raises up signs, okay? So, and if you look at history, you see the patterns have always been the same. In, in every generation, there are those that, and, and then when it looks like this thing is dying down, then it picks up again. Now, why? Because God is keeping a testimony in every generation. Yes, that's what God is doing. So when you see someone by faith, I'm not talking about who, uh, by faith, someone who by faith builds a massive church or a massive building or buildings and say, this is God's work. And you believe it. You don't start saying that, eh, eh, you don't know where they got the money from. You know this person. This person is walking by faith. 
And he's walking in obedience to God. And he's done that great. When you see those things, you look at it and say, wow. You see, God used this person. I know that this is what our faith is capable of doing. You don't start looking at faults and, and start to, eh, eh, because you, you, you feel, see, because you're trying to compare yourself with them. Because you feel, maybe you've even tried and, and you didn't go near. And then you start feeling, they must be doing something wrong. No, sir. No. And guess what? It's not everybody God will use for that sign. And then that's one. Number two, that sign is in no way of God saying that they are better than you. No. Because even Jesus made that statement, I come in a fire my time is up. Praise <laughs> God. What a place to stop. I'm going to tell you tomorrow the statement that I wanted to say that Jesus made. But this is this is so important for you to understand and cause it to help you. Praise God. I pray for you. That your spirit will open up to God's truth and his agenda. In the name of the Lord Jesus. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.